Kyo. I just heard this fire new track, bro. Just, just check it, dude. Yo, can you just listen? Okay, so if you're able to predict that coming, I'll take the L and you can dislike the video. Other than that, today I want to give you guys three tips to stop being predictable. Hopefully, by the end of this video, if you add all these tips into your arsenal, not even the greatest of Sharing Guns will predict your moves. And that's on Sakura. So let's just get into it. So for the first tip, it's to switch up your angles whenever you can. You can apply this in both long and short range fights. For long range, usually you're in a box or on a ramp shooting at somebody across from you. For a ramp situation, I usually shoot from the top of the ramp like most people will. I might even do it twice. I've shown my head up there twice and I put myself in the shoes of my opponent. Since I've peeked from the top twice, I'm willing to bet that they're expecting me to pop up from there again. From there, I take advantage of their expectation of me and I switch it up. Next time I peek, it'll be from the right side of the ramp where I can take advantage of a right hand peek and catch them a little off guard because I know they'll be focused at the top of the ramp. From there, I just switch between the two in no particular order, just switching things up. I know this example is super basic, but the idea is to know your options and not to do the same thing again and again and again and again because you don't want them to figure you out. If I'm boxed up, like in arena or scrims, I open up different kinds of peaks. You can do a window, a door, over the top, from the side, and so many other ways to switch things up. In this case, you also have to worry about the players around you because you never know who might be watching and guessing your predictable edits. Because if you keep doing the same thing, eventually they're gonna laser you or snipe you. And getting sniped, that's the worst way to go to the lobby. So please avoid it. In short range fights, like in box fighting scenarios, this is where you once again do optimal edits that give you a right hand peak advantage, but avoid giving your opponent the opportunity to predict your edits. Once again, you switch up your angles, maybe do a window, then the top right corners, and vice versa. If you're quick, you can do this thick boy edit and hide to the side. Most people don't expect this one. And then if you can avoid it, don't do this wide open four squared edit because most people predict that now. Plus, it leaves you wide open, and if he just has his gun out, and your pullout game is mad weak after the edit, then it's over for you. If you always open up the same edit and go for the same angle of shots, a good player will read you quick, expect it, and it won't work in every fight. My second tip is to flip expectations. I mentioned it in the first tip, but this is a pretty hard thing to work on right off the bat, and it can be pretty risky. Basically, put yourself in your opponent's shoes and try to think what they're expecting of you, and then do the exact opposite. So an example of this would be if I got heavy sniped in the body, or lasered, or just hit hard. I usually box up and that's what you should do. I know they're gonna push me and apply pressure to make sure I don't heal, but from there I'll definitely prioritize healing before going for any life ending risky plays, but sometimes their pressure is gonna be solid enough to keep me from healing. That being said, once I realize they're not gonna let me get my heals off, I flip a switch from playing passive to aggressive. I flip the switch, but it's like a flicker. In that little flicker of aggressiveness, you need to hit a shot that will turn the tides in your favor. In this case, I keep playing passive until they get impatient, and because I fought so many people, I know that it doesn't take long at all because they know you're on low health, and I understand they just want to be done with you and get their kill. That being said, while I'm playing passive, I'm looking for an opportunity to do damage back. If they're constantly SMG spraying me, I'll use my tip from my last video and I'll line up a shot and let them in. If they're pickaxing my walls again and again, I'll open a wide edit and make them pickaxe the air and line up a shot. Basically, my goal is to clap back in a single play and if I mess up, I risk going back to the lobby or just taking more damage. If I manage to get the hit and finish them, then great. But if he gets away, then I go back to being passive. I heal and I just reset. The idea is to use their expectation against them and do what they don't think is likely, which in most cases, if you do it right, will turn the fight in your favor. And then also, I guess another takeaway from this is to understand a good player can turn your upper hand against you. You never want to be too full of yourself, you know? And then for my third tip is to implement some mind tricks into your gameplay to throw off your opponent. Even simple things like fake outs, baiting, and resetting a wall after opening an edit can add so many more options for you to be unpredictable. Mind tricks are always a useful skill to have in any game and it adds a rewarding layer in your skill set as a player. And they don't even have to be complex when you start out. A simple fake out would be like building up three ramps, 
and then going back down to the first ramp and shooting from the side. Because you ramped up, they're going to assume you're at the top, but you'll just catch them off guard by just shooting from the bottom. A simple bait would be like building 3-4 to four ramps up and then purposely leaving weak points. They'll see the weak points and if they take the bait, they'll expose themselves to shoot you out. But you'll be quick enough to expect that, shoot back, maybe laser them or get some tags and be able to catch yourself without taking fall damage. And then resetting walls to catch bullets, it's a simple but really versatile option to think of when you're box fighting. Usually I just open the edit, shoot once, then I close and hold just like anybody else. Assuming they don't take the wall back, you open the edit again but instantly reclose it because you don't want to do the same thing twice. At this point, they won't know on which edit you're going to shoot and it'll make them panic if they don't know how to get out of the situation. These little things are extremely useful tricks that anybody can implement into their gameplay. Hopefully, as soon as anybody sees all these tricks that you're capable of, they'll be like, um, day. Right, Kyrie? Anyways, I'm going to wrap it up. If you guys know anybody that's new or returning to Fortnite that might like this channel, feel free to send them my way. Otherwise, thank you for being here, and as always, the support has been incredible, and it's all thanks to you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.